This project started as an idea among friends during the first lockdown in 2020, but it wasn't until 2021 that we started to focus on this project, properly getting more people involved and bringing the cast together. All recording was done remotely from home, with each person using what equipment they had to play their parts in this project. We hope you enjoy what we have created, especially as this is just one of many episodes we have plans for. So get ready to sit back, relax and enjoy, and listen. Unexpected Adventures in Unfinished Myths Episode 1 The Trouble with Toddlers Quite some time ago, in a kingdom called Mercia, there's been a few, lived two brothers. They weren't really brothers, Neg was a dwarf and Valian was an elf. Neg's father had found Valian as a baby in the mountains. Well, when he got home with a baby elf and not that day's supplies from the mines, the family wasn't best pleased. But to cut the story short, I'll get round to telling it someday, they called the baby Valian and he and Neg took over the family farm when the rest of the family went back to the mountains. Neg and Valian lived a relatively quiet life in their small village, except for the lack of knights in the area making them the only pair willing to go on the odd quest now and then. And that is how their new crop of peas got destroyed. But let's start at the beginning. It all began in the Blue Mermaid Inn. So the usual lads? Of course, Magda. We must celebrate our latest triumph. What's that? I didn't think you two have been on a quest since Lucas bought that talking goat. Donkey, Magda, and please don't remind me. It lived with us on the farm for almost a week before we could get rid of it. The poor beast had been cursed since childhood, an affliction none could remove save the witch who bestowed it. I think he said it was his mother, punishment for being naughty or something like that. Well, what are you celebrating? We finished planting the peas we got from the town last week. Had to make frames and everything for them. What's that? Oh, it's it's nothing. It's uh, probably just a barrel fell over, but I'll, I'll go sort it. You two enjoy your drinks. Did this not happen last week? It did. I think something might be up with Magda, but- DRAGONS! Dragons were very common in Mercia, and on the whole quite peaceful. The problem was most villagers only saw dragons from afar, and got most of their information about them from fairy tales. Neg, on the other hand, had a cousin who lived next door to a dragon. Very friendly, always had the best New Year's parties. Calm down everyone. But there are dragons! Where are the dragons? They flew down from the mountains, and are in the woods behind the mill. And have they done anything else? Uh, no, but they... But they eat people and burn things! Barbecued sheep was Tanaman's favourite, I think. I don't think there's anything to panic about. Fear not, village folk, for we shall find these dragons and ask them politely what their business is and if they will leave. Thank you, kind elf. Please save us from these dragons. Looks like you two have another quest. At least we got those peas planted. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to finish my drink. It is unusual that dragons should venture this close to humans, at least not since knights decided to add dragon slaying to their exams. Knights, for many years, simply guarded the royal palaces and family members. However, King Eustace the 14th thought it was a good idea to give them something to do, due to the lack of any wars actually happening. He declared that they should provide a service to the wider community by going on quests. Many of the knights, though, had spent their entire careers patrolling walls and getting drunk. This meant none of them had the faintest idea about how to go on a quest. And that is why King O, not another useless, as he was more affectionately known, ended up inventing the exams for knights. But it wasn't until his grandson, King Derek the Relic, came to the throne at 70 that dragon slaying was added to the exams. Apparently his nursemaid had an obsession with stories of dragons and insisted on reading the most horrific ones to him every night as a child. They probably just landed for a rest, especially if they're getting on a bit. Humans have to get upset about it though, don't they? I think I hear something. You said you knew the way. I did, but everything's different. It's only been a year since you visited your cousin. Excuse me, ladies. Could me and my friend be of any assistance to you? A dwarf and an elf. Dear guest to a humble valley, my brother and I heartily offer our assistance to you. Is that normal, an elf and a dwarf? 
not normally, but at least we can get some directions now. Would either of you two be able to point us in the right direction for the glowing peaks near Tamilworth? Of course, but why would you want to go there? It's one of the largest human cities in the kingdom. It's our son. He was taken by a knight. Oh, he's only a baby. How could they do that to us? They were the armor of Tamawa. If my son is harmed, I will kill them. Ladies, I understand your pain, but the Duke has a vast army. Two dragons will never get close enough to the city. Are you suggesting we go home? Forget about our son? Well, uh, no, but... All right, then. I think what Valian is trying to say is that we'll go. An elf and a dwarf could easily get into the city and rescue a baby dragon. Wait, how old did you say he was? A hatchling, barely a year old. <sighs> That's good. He'll be small enough for us to rescue them. I know you aren't sure you can trust us, but humans already hunt your kind. Your actions, as reasonable as they are, might only make things worse for the rest of your kind. That is true, elf. We will give you a week to rescue our son. He was taken only yesterday, meaning the knights have probably only just arrived back in Tamilworth. We will do all we can to return your son. Go back to your mountains and we will send word when we return. Neg and Valiant had set out the very next day for Tamworth. The journey usually took about five hours by donkey, but they had stopped a few times, so subsequently it was going dark when they arrived. That looks like an alright inn. Hear thee, hear thee, the time be 6.30. Good sir, do you have any beds for two weary travellers? We don't serve your kind here, nor has. This isn't the poor quarter, you know. Mercia was full of many creatures, and in small towns and villages they lived relatively harmoniously together. Cities, however, were a different matter. Humans had taken it upon themselves to create a class system that was uncompromising, and through this decided that racism was perfectly acceptable. This, of course, thoroughly peeved most elves and dwarves, especially Neg. You little imp! Where do you think the gold that pays for all this comes from? I think it's time you went back to your mine, little imp. <laughs> you can talk, but can you fight? Now, Neg, I don't think this is the time. You! No fighting in the streets. I believe we should leave, Neg. Oh, Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. yeah. You must be the entertainment like for the princess. Excuse me? Yeah. What, what, what? We were told to look out for dwarves and elves that had been hired for Her Highness's entertainment. Are you for real? I believe this may work to our advantage, Neg. Yes, good sir. We are Her Highness's entertainment. Be off with you foul creatures and tell Her Highness that we want none of them. Quiet, yo. Go back to your business. Come on. Please follow me. Good evening, Sir Edgar. I found these to in town and escorted them here. Thank you. You may leave now. You're early. I thought you'd be arriving tomorrow. Good weather? Um, yes. Uh, the, the fair weather meant the roads were easier to traverse. Well, the princess is a little busy at the moment with her new pet. But I will let her know you are here. Please wait. That was close. And good weather was all you could come up with, brother. Let us hope this new pet, perchance, is the dragon we seek. you. Dragons don't have mummers. Now, as far as princesses are concerned, they do have a tendency to be spoiled, but Princess Sophia was probably the worst. At 15, she was eligible to start courting, yet with the temperament of a toddler and the education of an eight-year-old, most young men tended to keep as far away as possible. After finding out from a maid that the creatures in her fairy tales were real, she became obsessed with them. Luckily for her, her father, the Duke, was the only man with knights capable enough and stupid enough to get her what she wanted. A dragon. Edgar, he burnt my dress again, stupid dragon. Oh, my little forest friends have come. You're joking. I am at your service, most beautiful highness. Edgar, Edgar, he called me pretty. Does the little one speak? Yes, your highness. Mama, mama. Stop it, stop it. Your highness, perhaps he simply wants food. Of course. Maids, 
Take Drago to the kitchens. He wants food. Now, my new friends, sing and dance for me. What did she say? Your Highness, we are both tired from our long journey. Is it not possible that we might have some refreshments before we perform? No. Now sing. Valian. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Old fields of old where we did play In green meadows where we did lay A fair maid soon did pass my way And we too soon strolled into the hay Old mountains high with clouds so low Your stony base we could not hoe but still my love did sit and sew Among the rocks where we did sow Those fields are cold and grown to grey My fair maid she did fade away Yet we will mine now where we lay For gold is the price that we will pay Your Highness seems tired that was boring. Give me something fun in the morning. I'm going to bed. If you would care to follow me to the kitchens. Hopefully that damn dragon will still be there. Hey, hey, oh, please eat the meat. They don't eat raw meat at that age. Excuse me? You need to cook the meat for him. But cooks just put the fires out. There's no cooked meat left in the kitchens. It's all gone up to the banquet hall. Go to the garrison kitchen. They will have some. Leave the dragon here, though. We don't want a riot. I'll leave you two to find some bread and water. It shouldn't get too cold in here overnight. Good night. They expect us to sleep here. Meg, please focus. This is our chance. Mama? Mama? He can smell his mother's on us. See that box there? We'll put him in that. Get in, little one. We're going to take you back to your mother's. Let's get the donkeys. Bring out your dead. Bring out your dead. Bring out your dead. Halt! No, it's you two. Leaving this time of night. A friend wanted us to visit them while we were here. Odd time for visiting. They are half-elf, my good friend, and as you humans say, uh, our ways are strange to you. Ah, uh, you want the poor quarter then? It's that way. Many thanks, my good man. Let's get moving fast. Did they have that box with them before? Ah, uh, never mind. Who's that coming up the stairs? City guards were not knights, and maids to petulant princesses cared naught about their charges' little whims. Instead of going straight to the garrison kitchen and back, our maid was now coming up the stairs to visit her favourite guard, who promptly abandoned his post in favour of spending his time with her hidden away from anyone else on duty who might discipline them. But suffice it to say that an hour passed before the dragon's disappearance was noted. If only the guard had asked about the box. Did the mage send our message? Of course. They replied they would be here as fast as their wings could take them. Good. That means they'll be here any minute then. That damn mage always keeps you for a few hours, even though it takes him two minutes to send the message you want as soon as you get there. That dragon's only been here a day, and he's eaten most of the lamb we bought. He's a growing dragon. And the humans didn't have the faintest idea on how to feed him. At least they didn't follow us. Although Magda said she received a proclamation to pin up asking about us, those birds are so unreliable delivering to her and not to the village elder. I believe she knows some sort of witchcraft. I think they're here. Now, don't get too excited. <laughs> Was that a flame? Baby! Oh my, Abby! That was definitely a flame. <laughs> now.
Now, it was unusual for a dragon of Eb's age to produce fire, but under the circumstance of extreme excitement produced on seeing his mother's, our baby dragon did just that. It would be impossible to believe that that much fire could come from a dragon that small. But Neg and Valian had to believe as the roof of their farm began to burn, as one flying loop-de-loop -loop created a spark big enough to reach the thatching. Luckily, mature dragons are adept at putting out fires as well as starting them. They do this through some complicated way of collecting water on their wings as they fly through clouds. But anyway, the fire was put out as quick as it started, with Neg and Valian ending up soaked through in the process. We are sorry. We would stopped it before it spread too much. The peas! It will take us some time to repair the roof. And yes, unfortunately we'll have to start again with the peas, because it appears they have been drowned. Again, we are sorry. We should leave before we cause more trouble. Thank you for everything you've done, though. I suppose it's a good thing they put the fire out before leaving. Do you believe they collect the water as they fly through the clouds? Never bring a dragon home. I shall put everything in the cellar when it is dry. Shall you clear some space for a tent? Valian. Neg? It's going to take us weeks to rethatch that roof. And the money? With half the crops flooded, how are we going to pay for it? And so we shall leave our two heroes roofless and drowned. At least now they both know why people say never work with children or animals. This episode of Unexpected Adventures in Unfinished Myths featured the voice talents of Daniel Newman as Neg, James Gibbons as Valian and additional voices, Sarah Bricknell as the narrator and the maid, Georgia Ford as Magda, Alex wilson Roselle as Villager 1 and additional voices, Ross Norman as the innkeeper and Villager 2, Nina wilson Roselle as Princess Ophelia and additional voices, Caitlin Laird as Dala, Sierra Laird as Mally, Barney May as the guard, Casey Suddeth as Edgar, and featuring Oliver Davis as Ebb. The production was written and directed by Sarah Bricknell and edited by James Gibbons. Music was by Serena Aria Alicia and Gemma Cartmel. As you are no doubt running low on mead, fear not, as you have plenty of time to acquire more from your local brewery before the next episode graces the fantastical interwebs. Anon, fair listener. Anon. <laughs>